boys and girls, we know what this means. Music in the beginning means there's another review. Hold on, let's uh, let's get more comfortable. No, that's uh, mood lighting. Uh, we're not going to talk about the UV setting. Thank God for. Oh my God, I did it! Hooray! Yes, we're not going to talk about the acid. Uh, lighting, UV. I don't have problems, I'm on medication, it's all legit. The doctor gives it to me, shut up and stop asking. Okay, so, we're going to have fun. I did it again, I even practiced this time. Okay, well, sorry for the movement. I'm working on a situation to make all of this a lot better, a lot more satisfying for everyone, including myself, because quite frankly, using this uh, tripod is interesting and useful, but if I could get like a boom arm, that might be a little bit more entertaining for everyone, including myself. I am part of every... Okay, yes, English. We've gone over how hard it is before. So, I recently did an unboxing for... Ta-da! The 10 Hi-Fi P1. Planar magnetic 10mm driver, in-ear monitors. This is not the stock cable. This is, in fact, the cable that came with the 10T2, back when I believe they were known as uh, Tin Audio, something along those lines. Uh, there is a particular reason for that, but we'll get into that in short order. So, within two minutes, I'm here to tell you, yay, nay, and some of the caveats. For $170, $169.99 US, off of linsoul.com, shipped from Hong Kong, China, to wherever you are. Do you want these? If you've experienced planar, and you want to have a more portable, friendly, and budget-friendly planar, because these are going to be the cheapest planar magnetic in your monitors you are going to find on the market, bar none, especially a plain on my neck. Okay, well, there we go. Got that one out of the way. I'm sure another one's uh, soon to come. Uh, if you're looking for a plain on magnetic in your monitor that doesn't suffer from the standard planar issues of sibilance or weird spikes in the low to mid region, typically in the, I'm sorry, not low to mid, high to mid region, typically in the high region or mi mid highs uh, or even low highs, sometimes there is a spike on the frequency response graphs. These don't exactly have a whole bunch of that. In fact, they tuned it quite well. So if you know planar, and you know you like planar, and yes, I'm going to compare it to this, audio files be gone because I'm not comparing price for performance. I'm comparing uh, relative sound signatures. These are the Odyssey LCD2Cs. These retail for approximately $800. I'm still paying them off. The old boy's not that wealthy. I just uh, had Credit, as it were. Those are notably a dark headphone, especially when you relax your acoustic reflex. We can go more into that. I'll link it down below. Dog's still in the room. Sorry. But the 10P1s, they are awfully similar in delivery, albeit a good bit less dark. But if you're looking for detail and... Detail retrieval, just on top of just detail, detail retrieval, and planar base that is very present on the LCD 2Cs, then you know what you're getting into. If you don't know what any of that sounds like, and you don't have the availability, but you don't have a lot of money, there were some people who were not satisfied with these headphones that sold them online. Because they thought that this was going to be a base IAM. No, these are very, not clinical, but more analytical than uh, most dynamic drivers. I can't necessarily speak for the sound of balanced armatures. I'm still working on a few sample sets of that. Go lay down, sweetheart. I love you very much. Here, no bed. Go. Oh. Stay. 
terribly sorry, children. So if you're looking for a rather analytical sound that's very clean, very presented, very fast, and can be tamed or tuned very easily with only the slightest of budgets to work with and only the slightest of skill, dog snot, to work with, these might just be your best friend. Now, knowing what I know, yes, I would purchase these again, even without my early bird discount. These are good. If you want to know what a good set of planar sound like, and you're not working with a very high budget, this is an extremely valid, comfortable, full-bodied experience into the world of planar. Is it the best? No, just because they pulled out my prized LCD-2C does not mean they are comparing directly. But I will say, for the sake of argument, with my current knowledge set, these sound and behave more like a micro LCD-2C versus a monolith M1060C with an open back modification. The M1060C doesn't have the same kind of detail retrieval or... Uh, the detail retrieval or the stage or the precision that these offer. These, in those regards, sound more, more like the LCD-2C. So, we're at about 7 minutes 10 seconds approximately, because I may trim the beginning of the videos. Do I recommend these? Yes, very highly. If you know planar, you know what you're getting into. These are good. I've been dying for a satisfactory planar experience that is IEM. So I can take these out and about without roasting my head in the southern heat of the United States. Those of you that live down here know exactly what I am speaking of. And it is not fun. I really must admit, not entertaining even the slightest. Now those of you that don't know a whole bunch about planar, I would recommend go for a used set. Make sure they clean them rather well. A fair price is at MSRP or below. Why? Because most of these people are using them for less than a week. And trust me, they're probably not sleeping with them. If they'd end up not liking them, they're just looking to break even or pay for the shipping and break even. So, you're going to get a deal. If you absolutely must wait for a deal, go to AliExpress. You could probably find them there now, or in the future, for a cheaper price, such as the Tin T2s. However, if you're in the States, you'll have to wait for shipping from China. If you're buying from Linsoul, you have to wait for shipping from China. If you're in the States, you could probably look onto a marketplace or an AV exchange on Reddit or something similar. And you can get yourself a pair of these. I would still recommend buying them new, just because I'm a spoiled shit. But all in all, one way or the other, yes, I completely and totally recommend these. There we go. We are sub ten minutes, just ever so slightly. For those of you that come here to listen to me and go about the ways that I usually go about, you are welcome to stay. For the rest of you that wanted a really quick and easy yes-no answer, as, as well as a song that I feel embodies these devices. Uh, speaking of which, Arch Enemy, War Eternal album, You Will Know My Name is the song, because these deserve you knowing their name. Just listen to the lyrics of the song in your spare time. Really nice. Okay, we're about nine minutes, fifty seconds in, here we go, boys and girls, children, ladies and gentlemen. Even old folks, because I'm sure you like to listen to music too. Now it's time for Farsal to do his shtick. These little buggers. If some of you remember the video game, Brutal Legend, and the god of metal within that game, Ormagodin. These shiny little buggers would make Orma Godin proud. Extremely proud. And they play metal satisfactorily. 
These are not your base IEMs. These are a satisfying IEM. You can tune them to have a better base by putting different kinds of tape on the poor. Oh, come on, let's zoom in. Zoom, oh, sh balls, shit, ass, and hell. Okay, second try. There, you can see the port right above the L. You can put different tapes there. Someone said they could put blue tech. Yes, you could, but you really don't want to get anything on the inside of the housing. Sorry, focus. There we go. You really don't want to get anything inside of the housing. What you do want to do is you want to impede the airflow from the inside of the driver housing. I use 3M Micropore Medical Adhesive Medical Tape for the normals. Uh, you can also use electrical tape. You can use pretty much any kind of sealant. I would just recommend a non-permanent solution because I found for different types of song and different tips, opening and closing the port tends to uh, make a better difference. Uh, it's really quite amazing. I even have a small approximation of a script. See? Ta-da! Look, I wrote down talking points. I'm trying to get better at this. So, with the phone tips, you get excellent isolation. Top notch. You get bolster low, bolstered lows, some mids, and the highs seem to get trimmed ever so slightly. I don't exactly know why, but it just sounds more trimmed to me. And yes, I have performed the test with and without the tape modification to the base of the nozzle's port. <clears throat> what the taping will do is bolster the low frequencies, specifically. Not so much of the mids, but certainly the lows. Just this port next to the left and right delineating num uh, number. No, no, Farcel, you're not that damn old. Letter here, right next to the nozzle. If you've been wearing them for a while and you're a particularly oily fellow, clean it off with some isopropanol, isopropyl alcohol, IPA, take your pick of names. Basically get a solvent and clean it damp, not wet, damp. You, you do not want to get some schmutz on the inside of this. Ever. Not if you can help it. Now, continuing on. With the tape mod and the foams. The foamies boost up the lows to mids and so on and so forth even more so. And the tape pulls away some of the 10k spike. Making what sibilancy problems you may or may not have had. And I have not really had those unless I've been powering them to absurd levels. Now I know what you're saying. But first, I like to listen to my music right proper and loud, yes sir. Well, Bubba J, you're doing it wrong because holy shit, I swear to God I was about to go deaf with the levels of volume I was dumping into my ear canal. Not bloody good for you. Practice some acoustic reflex and you can get more out of these. Now, going from there, let's see. Potentially more of a comfortable fit if you know exactly what size of foamy you want. They do include two, as I'd mentioned in my unboxing. This is the case for the newbies. The black ones are the newbies, the other ones are, well, tin hi fis. However, there is a stipulation to the foamies. For those of us who don't wear IEMs a whole bunch, or have gotten unused to wearing IEMs a whole bunch, you may notice that what happens whenever you put in the foam tips and it expands fully, and this can take up to an hour, I find, to really feel the effects, is it can cause air canal, air, ear, ear, god damn it, ear fatigue. Ear canal fatigue, inner ear discomfort, not from the body of this wonderfully designed golf club. <laughs> but no, uh, from the foams, I've actually found that they're more uh, tapered flange silicone tips work really, 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 really well. Large, medium, and small, I'll be damned. I finally found some silicone tips that work for you. me, Fossil, the wizard. <laughs> uh, let's see. One over that, one over that, one over that. Uh, foams can offer a potentially more secure fit. So it stops it from pulling out. Now these can 
Be warned to wear this is over the back of the ear, stopping it from being pulled out substantially so. However, I have noticed, if you are determined, you can wear these normal-like, like, like uh, any other IEM. Uh, I don't know, the air pods, the ear pods, the skull candies. Take your pick. You can wear them like that as well. And they will stay with the foamies, especially if you pull them a bit more off onto the little ridge on the nozzle there. That's the hardest part to get past. You will need foam tips that are roughly uh, 4.9 to 5.1 millimeters in inner diameter. The newbies work absolutely fine. And good God, I'm going to have to get this on later. Nope, later, 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 later. Faster video, faster video. I promise this time. Okay. You can get it from a narrow to a deep... Uh, I'm sorry, a short to a deep fit. By... Just, let me zoom in a little. Uh, no, no, zoom in, focus, focus, there we go. You can put it to where it just barely passes this lip here, this retention lip, and have a nice long tip, and then push it in nice and deep. Or you can put it to where the base of that uh, foam sleeving is right up against the body here, and then really jam it in. Get that tight fit. And it seems like the different size foams for your ear, and the deeper the fit, the more the bass response is tuned, the more or less room it has to do its warbly thing, as sound often does. Now that's for your mid-lovers and your bass lovers. There is not a lot of LFE or sub-bass in this, at least not past approximately 70. It starts petering out at around 80, 75 hertz if I'm not mistaken, and then gets lower and lower and lower. Not exponentially, but well enough. It takes a fairly linear drop. Fairly linear. You can bring that back with the tape, as mentioned before, and foam tips. If you want just a little bit more lows, but you still want to maintain the precision that planars can do, that's where your favorite silicones come in, so long as they meet the size requirement of the aforementioned 4.9 to 5.1 millimeters. That pulls away some of the mids and some of the lows, even with the tape. And I've gone through all of the tips extensively. And you get more highs and more mid-mids to mid-highs and so on. And what I find is there's more clean of a representation of what planar can do. You can get a darker signature or at least a warmer signature for sure. But putting on these, I feel offered a more... Um, they're both analytical, but a cooler listening experience rather than a warmer listening experience. So if you're looking at a graph, a uh, frequency response graph, it would be responding closer towards a northeastern direction, or at least a northeasterly trend, rather than a southwesterly trend. Oh, I'm sorry, south northerly trend. South? No. Northwesterly trend. It's been a very long day for your dear Faso children. So less of a warm signature with the uh, um, silicones. The script is not helping when you are dog tired, I must say. <laughs> so let's see. Let's go to more of the silicone tips. Uh, potentially deep. Deeper fit, depending on the length of the foamies you're using, so if the silicones are longer, then deeper fit. In this case, not so much, but it depends on if you're going to use any of the stop tips at all. I'm just reading over. Uh, it's about a bit far more fickle to get a seal. If you know what you're looking for, you're great. If you don't know what you're looking for, you could be like me and go through every single one of them until you find a few that work when you do it a certain way. A little bit more fickle. All right, 21 minutes. Uh, definitely less secure fit, but if you have it going over the back of your ear, the wire that is, not as much of an issue. If you have it dangling uh, OG style, then you're going to have some problems there. 
So, I've noticed with the foamies, you get a narrow yet deep sound stage, very deep. And the bass is something akin to a fog. It's warm, uh, a warm fog, like on a midsummer's night. It's, it's enveloping, but it doesn't completely obfuscate all of the other instruments. It's just there, more than willing to say hello and present itself and keep itself there. It's very deep, and it gets deeper the further away it sounds. Whereas with the silicone tips, it's more like a mist, a warm mist. It's still present, it's still relatively deep, and it goes back, but not nearly as far. But it obfuscates everything else even less. And the soundstage does widen ever so slightly when you use the silicones. I do notice an interesting thing with the silicones versus the foams is a sense of height becomes far more apparent on the silicones versus the foamies. Let's see. Uh, we already talked about different materials or different tapes being used to seal it differently because the micropore tape allows for air to actually be osmosis through or pushed through the micropores, whereas something like electrical tape would be nigh on impermeable to the air. Let's see. These, yes. These are very heavily dependent on the mix and or the mastering of the music or the source that you are listening to. I have heard some MP3 files when mixed and mastered really well, such as McGordon's Doom OST, or any high-budget movie or anime OST, not, not, like, kawaii type of OST. No, we're, we're talking like, you know, a reasonable one. I don't have a reasonable one, because I don't speak. Don't speak. Sue me. Uh, but a more well-funded music adventure for an OST will have a better sound, even if you're just working with 320 kilobits per second off of Spotify. I do now have Tidal Premium, so I get to listen to mastered tracks and hi-fi on damn near everything they offer. And I will say, I listen to Megahertz, a Rammstein-like band, uh, aus Deutschland, from Germany, if I'm remembering my German correctly. Well, Deutsch, 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 I think is the proper pronunciation. Uh, I digress, sorry. Listening to the MP3 on Spotify, significantly noisy really cloudy. Didn't enjoy it as much. I pulled it up on Tidal Premium, listening to the hi-fi uh, CD quality, and it was a lot better. Oh my goodness, it was so much more comforting to my ears. Less noisy, less dirty, just it performed like a planar should. But it's also a very loud and noisy song. I mean, it's heavy metal, or heavy metal industrial, something along those lines. So... Yeah, very mix-dependent and mastering-dependent. So, great music sounds great on these. Poppy music sounds okay. Basshead music, uh, go with something different. This isn't your shtick, unless you want to hear parts of the music you've never heard before because your eardrums were assaulted with rapey bass. Well, we're at 25 minutes. Now I'll cover the cables. The, hy uh, the hybrid C8 triple win cable at a 2.5 millimeter balance termination sounded great on my ES100 uh, USB Bluetooth damp as well as my Lox GP20 hybrid tube amp. Sounded great. I absolutely loved it. The reason this is on the 10T2 cable is there was an oopsie. I noticed the right side was slipping a little, so I decided to try and wiggle it a little. And it snapped. So, do be gentle with the stock cables. I would not blame Lin Soul for this, or Tin Hi Fi for this. I will instead blame the source that they got these from. Planars are not 
cheap. Seriously, look for any other play on our IEM. You might be lucky if you found something brand new or used at $200. And I'm not going to have a decent cable, because the wire is good. I can always go back in and re-solder a new MCX, and I'm currently going through the motions with customer service, so we'll see how that goes. But the, what I believe is silver cable, or silver plated cable from the 10T2, works just fine. Sounds absolutely gorgeous. So, that's what's going on with these. How do you like this newer, faster format? Let me know. I know it's not that much faster, but I've tried to condense the beginning of it. Uh, I still have some work. I did neglect to mention the base head, or lack of this being a base head IEM in the beginning. I realize this now. Uh, unfortunately, I want this to go on the internet. I would much rather learn from my mistakes and show that I am learning that I'm doing wrong rather than being less lazy in actually fixing it. But sleep is a uh, bitch of a thing to find at this day and age. So, terribly sorry. However, I'm sure I'm not the only one they're coming to, to get a review. At this point in time, I'm at 23, 28 subscribers, so I'm not too worried about uh, being criticized there. However, the shotgun style, the faster style, let me know how you like it. So, before this makes an additional file that I have to cut together, thank you for coming to see your old buddy, Fossil the Wizard. Come back and see me again soon. But in the meantime, have a beautiful day, a wonderful evening, a pleasant night, and wonderful rest. And I'll see you, the viewer, again soon. Ta-ta.